with Joel Dignam from Better Renting. Joel, tell us about Better Renting. What is Better Renting? So Better Renting is a community of renters working together for stable, affordable and healthy homes. Uh, I started up Better Renting about four years ago. Uh, the first issue that sort of piqued my interest was energy efficiency standards for rental properties. Uh, there's a whole range of issues affecting people renting these days. We've obviously got more people renting and renting long term and we want to make sure that people in the rental sector uh, increasingly for life can still have good homes. So we're here this week talking about energy efficient housing. It's a challenge for you know, millions and millions of Australians, for governments, for industry, but it's a specific challenge when it comes to renters that might be a little bit harder for them than for other Australians. What, what are some of the challenges for renters? I guess the, the fundamental difference for renters is that you don't have the option to make changes to your property. I actually bought my own place last year, I was lucky enough, and, and virtually the day I moved in I was putting insulation in the ceiling, I got some honeycomb blinds sealing up the drafts. Um, if I'd been renting that place I would have just had to accept it as, it as it was. That's one part of the problem. The second part is that renters in Australia have very insecure tenure. So you might move into a place, you get a 12 month lease and for all you know you'll be moving in 12 months time. So even if you could make these changes, some of the changes that might uh, be worthwhile um, aren't worthwhile, it's just going to be for, for 12 months. And people don't have that long-term security and often aren't too keen to be improving someone else's property without that confidence of a longer uh, tenure. What do we know about the quality of the homes that most Australian renters live in at the moment? So in general, Australia has pretty awful housing stock um, compared to other OECD countries particularly compared to cold climate countries, which tends to do it better. So the irony is uh, often people, you know, they come to Australia from Germany or Sweden and they're astonished by how cold they are here in winter. Now, and then rental properties are worse again, because what you see in rental properties is, as I said, because people in rentals um, can't improve them, because the person who owns it isn't in a position, isn't motivated to act, doesn't tend to act. We have this situation, often the worst properties are the ones being inhabited by people renting. Uh, who in particularly in the current rental market often have nowhere else to go. So you talked about the motivation of the landlord. Often in this space we hear people talk about the problem of split incentives, uh, that I guess the person benefiting from the energy efficiency upgrade isn't the person having to pay for it, in a simple way of putting it. Is that the problem as you see it, that landlords aren't sufficiently incentivised at the moment? Yeah, so the split incentives comes up a lot in the conversation around this. And I think what's interesting about the conversation we were just, just having at the conference is the number of people in the audience who were actually able to point to contrary evidence. Uh, so certainly from Better Renting's point of view, that doesn't begin to explain the issue we see. And, and what we actually see is landlords do have incentives to act. For example, they can get better sales values. But even when governments give them incentives, they don't act. And then when they do act, it's often because of a different motivation. Sometimes because they knew the tenant and felt a bit more of an emotional connection. And that's what we heard from other people saying that there are people there work on government programs, trying to give free upgrades to landlords and struggling to do that. And so I think what that says is our understanding of this problem maybe needs to be a bit more nuanced and the solutions we consider needs to take that into account. So from your point of view, we sort of can't, we can't solve this entirely from the demand side by sort of incentivising. What do we need to do? Is it about uh, more regulation, more mandating in terms of what we expect of um, landlords on behalf of the tenants of this country? Well, look, the same way that uh, we insist upon a certain safety standard for vehicles, they have to have seat belts, or we insist upon a certain safety standard for our restaurants, um, maybe it's gates around swimming pools, rental properties need to make a standard that will ensure that they're healthy and that they're safe for the people renting them. And I think we need to remember that people rent, the landlords are running a business, they're delivering an essential service, and of course some responsibility has to go with that. I think maybe some of the missing piece of the puzzle has actually been understanding just how dangerous cold homes are for people. Uh, it's not just, you know, a bit of inconvenience. We are talking about a serious threat to people's well-being. This isn't a nice to have, this is a must have. This is absolutely a basic standard. That is my home going to uh, make my children sick or not? And I think the answer to that for everyone who rents should be, it won't make my children sick. That seems like a reasonable thing to hope for. So you've been sort of pushing in your work for minimum standards for rental homes. Can you just talk to us a little bit about how that would work and where we're at to in terms of getting to that goal? So we're definitely seeing more action on this issue than we have hitherto. Uh, the Victorian and ACT governments are both acting on this issue. Victoria is introducing a requirement for energy efficient heaters that will come into effect from March next year. And the ACT will soon be introducing a requirement for ceiling insulation for uninsulated properties. Uh, that will probably be kicking in around July next year, I would guess. Uh, so that's been really positive to see. 
What are the next steps? What do we need to see happen next? We'd certainly love to see more jurisdictions getting uh, on board. Tasmania is an area, of course, where the, the coldish is particularly pronounced, but it's actually pronounced all over Australia. Even in Brisbane, a startling number of deaths can be attributed to cold weather there because the homes aren't built for it. So we want everyone to get moving, but also I guess we need to be a bit more ambitious with the standards we're introducing. So Victoria's done a reverse cycle, ACT has done insulation. Probably what we need to see is a combined standard that brings both of those to bear. And then moving forward, uh, actually raising that ambition, probably thinking what more can we do with these properties uh, to make sure that we are keeping them healthy, but also moving towards net zero homes. And how much of your work is, involves also, I suppose, sort of encouraging and emboldening renters themselves to start asking for these things, to understand the level of the bad deal they're getting at the moment? We do a lot of work with people who rent. Uh, we previously made an energy efficiency guide. I think the first of its kind that sort of had specific things that renters can do even if they can't modify the property. So that's really using things like door seals, uh, door snakes, um, bubble wrap on the windows. Uh, and we increasingly want renters at least to understand the impact that this issue has on them to sort of be able to join the fact they're getting sick with their house. But unfortunately, this, the solution to this isn't going to come from renters speaking up. In Australia's rental market, renters have very little power. It's a very hard um, for them to be the ones driving this change. We do sort of need government to be looking out for people who are renting and ensuring these homes can do meet a standard. But you're uh, deploying your army of renters in a pretty interesting way as some <coughs> citizen scientists and researchers at the moment. So tell us a little bit about that project. So we uh, have previously run, we're running again this winter, a project called Renter Researchers. We recruit people who rent across Australia and give them the tools to track the temperature in their homes. And then in addition to tracking that quantitative data, we are doing surveys and speaking with these people about their experiences. Now that gives us a really powerful insight into understanding the impact of this problem on people and quantifying it. That's been really powerful and interesting. But I think more so we can help other people to understand this issue isn't just about energy bills, it's not just about a bit of carbon abatement or being a little bit warmer on a winter evening. Uh, we are hearing from people for whom having a more efficient home would transform their lives. It would mean that they are not ashamed to invite friends over because their friends complain about the cold on a winter evening. The, the ability to, you know, to use your home as a home is contingent upon it being a healthy temperature. I think that's something we need to, to get our heads around. That sounds really interesting. I wish we could talk more about it, but we're running out of time. So thanks so much for being with us here, Joel. A pleasure. Thank you.